Hey guys, it's Nicole. So today we are going to talk about hair body versus apple body. And this got brought up because we have started at my gym a body composition challenge recently. And I'm helping people, um, or guiding them rather, towards eating correctly based on their body type. So talking about the two main body types here as far as pear body and apple body, that's an indication of where you naturally store fat or excess fat, okay? So the pear body people tend to have bigger hips, bigger butt, bigger legs, all right? They tend to store most of their excess body fat or body fat in general below the abdomen, below the waist. Apple body people, those people tend to have smaller and skinnier legs. When they have excess body fat, they tend to get that tire, okay? They tend to get that beer belly, all right, the beer gut. So what do those different fat storages mean and what are they called, right? Subcutaneous fat or subcutaneous abdominal fat is the fat that you can pinch, right? That's the fat that keeps you from seeing your six packs or, or seeing your abs, okay? That's surface. And that's not necessarily an indication of increased um, risk to heart disease, um, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes. What we're really concerned with is the visceral fat. That's the fat that surrounds your organs. Now, a little bit of visceral fat is healthy. It is normal. You want that to protect your organs when they're smashing into each other during activity. However, it's when it becomes excessive, that's what makes the risk for disease and premature death very high, okay? It increases your systemic inflammation, right? Inflammation. Um, it increases your risk for high blood pressure. It increases your risk for cardiovascular disease and type 2 diabetes. So as unfair as it may seem, you need to accept this if this is your body type. If you are an apple body, if you tend to store your body fat and excess body fat around your abdomen, around your waist, you are naturally at a higher risk for all these things listed. Even though you may have the same BMI or the same body fat levels as a pear body, you store the fat in a more dangerous area, it simply means you're at a higher risk for blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and premature death. You just have to accept it. So your margin of error is a lot smaller. So Managing your body fat and your body composition is going to be a lot more important than the pear body. Okay, now it's, it's always important to have healthy body composition levels, but again, it just means you're even at bigger, a bigger risk as a, an apple body because of that visceral fat around the organs. Okay, um, so BMI, I mentioned that earlier. Now, BMI is simply factoring your height and your weight. Okay, it doesn't tell the whole story, it can give you an indication of whether you should consider losing weight or where you are as far as um, you know healthy levels of body composition but it doesn't tell the whole story two reasons why one it doesn't distinguish between body fat and muscle mass so i could and i do have a higher bmi because i'm simply a larger person all right i'm tall i weigh a lot i'm dense but my body fat levels are actually low i have a lot of lean mass on my body so just factoring in BMI as an indication of my health is not very accurate. It doesn't tell the whole story, okay? Also, BMI doesn't account for fat distribution. That's what we're talking about today. Do you distribute fat more around your hips, your butt, your legs? Or do you distribute more around the abdomen, the visceral fat? Again, that'll indicate um, a bigger risk for all these scary diseases on the right. So, um... If you are a person that has a lower BMI, you want to really focus on the hip and waist ratio, all right, the girth, the circumference. So you're gonna take two measurements, all right? You're gonna take the waist girth. So that is gonna be the circumference, um, the narrowest part of your torso, usually belly button or slightly higher. So the most narrow part of your torso, in the middle of your body, you're gonna take that measurement, inches or centimeters, okay? And then the hip girth, the largest part of your hips, including your butt, you're gonna take that in either inches or centimeters. Make sure you use the right ones. Um, so if you're a person that has a lower BMI, but your waist is bigger than your hips, that would be an indication of that apple body again. That means you are at a much higher risk for someone who has a higher BMI with smaller waist circumference compared to their hips, right? That would mean they have more of a pear body. Um, so 
that scenario is what we typically see or refer to as skinny fat, right? Smaller people that have a lower BMI, again, BMI only meaning they're factoring in height and weight, they're smaller in stature, but they tend to have a lot less muscle mass. So uh, most of their weight or more of their weight comes from body fat. Where do they store the body fat? Visceral, okay, around the organs. So I will um, list some ratios for you to focus on based on where you are in the BMI um, chart and then what to focus on if you should focus more on the waist and hip girth versus if you should not worry about your BMI based on how much muscle mass you have. Um, so yeah, I just want to go over this with you guys. It's really important to pay attention to where you store your fat. That's a big indicator of your health risk. Please let me know if you guys have any questions or comments. Uh, fire away in the comment section or feel free to email me. You can also submit any questions you may have or things you want me to create content on on my website. That is the Barbell Bombshell dot com. See you guys later. Thank you.